Hey everyone, Jasmine here at the top of the episode with a few things per usual. So today's episode is with our friend Frank Figueroa and we got to talking about not only skating, but we had a really fun conversation with Frank that I think was very uniquely New York and we really got into what it's like to skate in the streets here and also to skate in rink community and really beyond that as you learn frank brings his roller skates pretty much anywhere even if it's not a roller skating event which is a lot of fun we also got into a lot of our common memories about special new york neighborhoods especially chinatown and yeah we just had a really good time and frank just embodies this spirit of really not just being present in the moment, but kind of indulging in the moment and really taking in everything that people, places, sights, sounds, smells, et cetera, et cetera, uh, have to offer to you, which makes a lot of sense in a city like New York, which can at times be sensory overload. So again, we have been super appreciative of everyone's support, listening to the podcast, sharing the podcast. We also offer the option of buying Skaterade patches and Skaterade stickers from us, which help to support us so that we can continue creating this podcast and bringing it to all of you. And again, you can find the links for those stickers and patches in our show notes. You can also find it in our link tree on Instagram and the stickers are there in our Ko-Fi shop. Also, if you've been enjoying the podcast, we ask that you continue to share it with your friends, spread the word, and tell them where to find us at Skaterade Pod on Instagram. If you could leave a review for us on Spotify or iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, that would be super helpful because it helps to promote our podcast so that more people will see it. So yeah, thank you so much. And we hope you enjoy this conversation that we had with Frank. It was a really good time. Content warning. This episode makes mention of suicidality and self-harm, so please proceed accordingly and take care. Welcome to the Skaterade Podcast. I'm Jasmine. I'm Mac. And today's guest is a New York native, an all-around passionate artiste. He's a lover, a traveler, a dancer, photographer, videographer, and Brooklyn roller skater. I want to take a moment to share my vivid memory of the first time I met Frank. A group of us, including Mac here, met up on New Year's Day to skate from Union Square for a short skate over to Pier 76. Once the street skating portion was over, we posted up at the pier and up rolls Frank on a scooter with a wireless speaker. He had a pair of well-loved Rydells, and I think they were taped up, and he... (laughs) was a one-man party. His joy was palpable, infectious even, and every time I've seen him since, he's managed to brighten my day. Sorry if that sounded very red from the page, but I did write that from the heart. (laughs) Using powerful words over here. Let's do it. it. (laughs) It's awesome. I feel that. It's it's said that my, uh, my energy is contagious. (laughs) <laughs> definitely and i remember too like you know when we were partner skating even like at you know brooklyn skates when we weren't partner skating just kind of being there with you and seeing you on the floor was definitely very nice and like it's like hard not to want to join in and then when we got to partner skate too like that just you know is also a, a strong memory of mine and i was like this is definitely someone in community that i really enjoy spending time with and skating with and like being around and stuff so it's definitely appreciated Heck yeah it's definitely appreciated uh that was a memorial night too mm-hmm. oh, you mm-hmm. came in the day after you had skated with mac and you were like did Mac tell you that I partner skated with them? It was amazing. And you were literally screaming <laughs> in the store. It was fun. It was sick. I keep being like, we got to partner skate again because I didn't really know what the fuck I was doing. And I feel like I didn't do a very good job by you because you were like cruising and you were like, all right, we got it. We got it. And I was always like turning the wrong way and doing all kinds of dumb stuff. And I was like, we, I got to rectify that situation. I'll do it again soon. But you want to know what? But you want to know what? By doing that, Hmm. you stepped out of a comfort zone and you enjoyed yourself. You know what? And you were free about it. And that was with your support. After it was all, yeah, yeah. What? After it was all done, Mm -hmm. 
You had the biggest smile on your face. <laughs> so happy about it. You just, you just, you was just like, oh, I can't thank you enough <laughs> for that. But Jasmine, you were that. Yeah, definitely. You said that. Uh, you said that I was screaming about it. Yes, I was when I came into the yeah. Home store. Yeah, you were screaming like, about oh. it in the shop. It was. I was about to record it too. <laughs> I think you might have gone back outside, like to your to your bike or something. And yeah, even outside, you were like. <laughs> yeah you have no idea because oh i, I, I you got me the pivot cups and i was just like oh my god everything is gonna go well yes <laughs> and oh, then, yeah that's and right then, i brought you those pivot cups that night too yeah and then just skating which are in general just seeing everybody in the community it just made me made, made me happy and just rise through the roof my energy level yeah dude that's awesome that's awesome. Yeah, one of the things, you know, that has always kind of struck me about you as a skater is that it's so clear how much you enjoy it. And it's so clear kind of your joy on skates and also like your playfulness with it. And one of the things like a conversation you and I had is because I, we I don't know how we were talking about it. We were just talking about like rhythm skating in general, but you were sharing with me like some of your dance background. And I think at that time I was like, yeah, it's very apparent, actually, because you move with your whole body and some of the dance steps and like the things you're doing are not specific to rhythm skating. Like it's just a little your flavor is a little bit different. Uh, mm. And, you, you you know, you shared that you, you know, have different, done different types of dance and stuff. And so actually one of our first questions that we want to dive into with you is like, can you just kind of give us that story of your background a little bit? You know, like how did you get into skating? Maybe, you know, is dance a part of that? Um, yeah. Where where'd you come from? <laughs> OK, so. Growing up in Brooklyn, I grew up in Fort Greene and the projects and Fort Greene projects. Um, dancing was always in my family. Music is always in my family. So um, coming from a family of dancers and DJs, so it's like I grew up with that. And then I also had family members and people around me within the community that I grew up in who also danced and skated. So. I grew up in a uh, hip hop culture, dance culture, street dance culture. And I was also a uh, aggressive inline skater. I skateboarded, I longboard, I did everything on wheels. I was doing it. And then, you know, when you're young, you experiment. So some of that stuff, I just kept, kept with it. I didn't stop, you know, and like people were like, oh, you have so many hobbies. No, this is the stuff that makes me happy. And this is the stuff I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So like with, when it comes to skating and dance, those are my release zones, you know, for like all the negative shit, excuse me, the negative stuff that I'm going out throughout the week and whatnot. I will go to the club and release on the dance floor. Same thing with the skating. I will go to Empire back in the days, or I will go out in the street. I'm also a street skater. Like I've done aggressive. So I will ride everywhere. And then during that time in 2007, where Empire closed, we had no skating rinks. Skate Key closed down in 2006. Empire closed down in 2007. So a lot of the skaters had to refrain to being outside. I was one of them. And during that time, I stopped skating and pursued dance. I grew up dancing with my sisters, brothers, some of the OGs in dance community. Um, it's... It's just I stopped skating once once uh, Empire closed and I stopped juggling the balance between dancing and skating. So I just started to travel and dance more than skating. And then I picked it up again about in 2013, I picked it up in skating. So my dance background comes from street dance. I do ballroom style dancing, hip hop, popping, locking. I do house. House is one of my favorite dance style, music. I listen to all styles of music. And when you explained about me moving my whole body, that's me letting the music control me. That's me being uh, music, musically etiquette. Like I'm paying attention to polyrhythms and, and everything. And I'm using my body to control that. And also expressing the message within the music that's being played. So it's not about just doing the tricks for me when I'm skating. For me, when I'm skating, it's about just releasing and letting the music control me. So that's why you see it's a little field fluid and energetic. So it's 
a little bit contagious when people see it from the outside. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And yeah, there is like um like a freedom to it almost, you know, like it, I can kind of tell that you're kind of like letting go, you know, you're not, it doesn't, you're, you know, I know with me sometimes, like you can tell, like when you're looking at me that I'm kind of like thinking about what I'm going to do next and I'm kind of, there's like some calculation happening and it, and there's a certain level of restriction to that. Right. Cause I'm not really able to like fully be embodied. I'm like in my head a little bit. And I feel like with you, how I experience you is that's not apparent. That's not present. You know, you're just in, mm-hmm. you're just in the music, you know, just, Full just state. fully embodying it. Um, And there's a a freedom to that. And I think that's part of what probably attracts people to that too, is there, there's a sense of, of sort of that, that freedom that you are expressing and experiencing um, Mm -hmm. for what that's worth, you know? Yeah. To add on to that, like I've got, I've gotten emotional during some songs and I'd be skating and sometimes tears be falling. It's because I feel what the person who is explaining the producer is producing and the music and the message in it so i feel that and i relate to it mm-hmm. and whenever i whenever i lace up it's just like boom let everything go forget about everything don't have no expectations and just go out there and do it there's no i can't mm-hmm. yeah the interpretation of it all seems very spontaneous where you're concerned definitely a oh, yeah? kind of a process oh, yeah. yeah you don't see it that way a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, <laughs> I, I, this is this is this is a little bit weird because I, I never really hear people uh, discuss about me. <laughs> so this is like a first, <laughs> like my style of skating and the way I skate and everything. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm always humble about it. I'm like, oh, thank you, but I'm still not good enough. <laughs> I mean, I try my best. I oh, that's things. not true. No, I'm serious. I'll be drill. I'll be. I'll be sitting here like I can do that. I'm gonna go home and drill that. Wait, watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's no, I can't. So that's why when I see you guys and you skate with me, I'll be like, Nah, y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. Y'all can skate. <laughs> don't, don't, don't have no fear. Let the fear go. <laughs> I have a question for you around music. So you mentioned that house music is one of your favorite genres to dance to. Would you say it's also one of your favorites to skate to? And this is a two part question. The other part of the question is why is house music so important to New York city skating specifically? Okay. I like house music. Me coming up house changed a lot for me, not just saying the dance, not just saying the music, just house in general, the music moves me like there's there's when it when it comes to house music and me and and dance i'm letting loose same thing with skating there's no difference it's the same with with house music in new york city you may hear a different house like a house song compared to what we listen to in a skating rink or in a dancing it's too different but Mm. the the bpms is a little bit different so one is a little bit faster one is a little bit slower but it still has the same message. So you can still relate to it, whether you're on feet or skates. And in New York City, I would say it's still going crazy. Like people love house music in New York, especially especially in the skating rinks now, they play and get heavy. You've heard it. Out in Jersey, they play it out in Branchbrook, mm-hmm. New Jersey, like crazy. On Sundays, that's why it's called church. <laughs> yeah, because it feels like there are some skaters that want to hear other stuff but house is definitely the it's like the uh the staple of new york skating specifically or new jersey a lot of people would beg to differ they would say like more of uh uh, james brown style type of music jb style type of music people like um a little bit of slow Mm -hmm. sets here and there Uh, Mm r&b people like hip-hop it's you can't please everybody um but with me when it comes to music not just house just I love all types of music and I'm going to skate and dance to it regardless. I'm not going to be picky. Same thing with the floor. You yeah. see my skate. <laughs> I'm indoor outdoor with them. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm going to skate. I'm going to have a damn good time about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do so, strike me as someone some people are really good to either or. Yeah. <laughs> because it, at, at the end of the day, you, you, you're investing your time to go out and skate. Why complain? Just mm-hmm. make it more stressful mm-hmm. to yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Just lace up and go. Yeah, I think there's something to be said too for the, the versatility of a skater that can skate to anything. And like the fact that it also kind of pushes you to like push yourself, building on a, a repertoire of skills, being able to skate to different types of music speaks to a level of versatility, you know? And I think it's interesting, yeah, to also hear your perspective on that too. I would like to see people be more fluent with their body when it comes to skating because it's mm-hmm. not just about balance. You can still balance, but you want to be able to move everything, not just Mm -hmm. lower part Mm -hmm. and everything. I want people to actually understand and feel the music when they skate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try Mm -hmm. to give off that vibe. Like, listen, you can still dance to it. (laughs) Still got a groove, you know? I feel like you and I vibe on the level of like, if music's playing, we both got to be wiggling. I feel like I always got to yep. wiggle at least a gotta little move. bit. If music's happening, my body's gotta like, move. I got to be bopping to the beat at least a little bit. I can listen to you talk mm-hmm. and I can also be like wiggling around a little bit. You really seem to get around town and you put a lot of miles on your skates. How many boroughs would you say you visit in a typical week? Because you seem like you're all mm. over the place. I'm at every event, whether it's a skating event, uh, outdoor event, free outdoor party event, or whether it's in the club, I have my skates with me. Sometimes I don't like riding the MTA, anti-social club, let's go. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I like being free outside on my skates and there's some really dope spots. So I would say I would visit maybe three or four boroughs, maybe, maybe four, yeah, four per week. Cause I'm out yeah. in Jersey too. You seem like you're always yeah. covering a lot of ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm everywhere. <laughs> if I'm not in the city, I'm either uptown, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan. It's, it's everywhere. Whatever is a good event and it's good music mm-hmm. playing, I'm out there skating. Do you have any favorite uh, events or like spaces that you like to skate? Uh, mm, yes, I do. I like I like uh, Branch Brook on Sundays. I like Branch Brook, mm-hmm. New Jersey, the skating rink out there. The floor is just so smooth. The music is always on point Mm -hmm. and the energy is through the roof. There's a lot of skaters Mm -hmm. out there, good skaters too. So it's a good Mm -hmm. way to brushing up your skills and communicate and just socialize with people and just learn from people watching them and get inspired. Like, yeah, just for listeners perspective, how long does it take you to get out there usually? Uh, if I'm taking the train, it would take me about 45 minutes to about an hour. Depending, because I'm coming from Brooklyn, so from Brooklyn to Manhattan, from uh, the bus mm-hmm. station or the train, take the New Jersey Transit and get off at Broad Street and just walk into to the um, park from there. But late night coming home, <laughs> be prepared. You ain't going to get home till like late. <laughs> Talking about 3 a.m. late. That's what I was. That's more what I was wondering. A Sunday night, like especially with New Jersey Transit, that's like a little more far and few between train wise. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going, plan a little bit more. And if I have a ride back, I get a ride back. That's that's even better. Yeah, that's definitely. even better than yeah. my night is official. But I like Branch Brook, <laughs> and I like Pier Seventy Six. Mm-hmm. I, I I that's my yeah, that's my new love right there. Mm-hmm. So nice to be outside. I'm with you. Like if I can be outside on my skates and that, and they have such smooth concrete over there too. And like a little bit of a roof. So it's not too sunny. And and not to mention they have, and they have social events, I believe on Mondays, they have a a roller skate meetup on Sundays and Mondays too, I believe over there. Oh, cool. I don't think I knew about those. So you're definitely a very familiar phrase to a lot of people in the skating community how would you define or speak about the role that you play in the skate community as a friend as a creator whatever the case may be because I feel like you wear a lot of hats in skate community uh I'm a friend big brother little brother just somebody who's free within the community I don't have no ties with anybody no crews I'm just by myself skating but yeah, just I'm I'm free within the community. You know, I just like being able to walk up to everybody and just, hey, how's it going? Escape for a little bit, you know, just mm-hmm. vibe out with everybody. And that was that's my main thing. I don't really see it or mm-hmm. do anything otherwise besides that. 
I just love skating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of see you as someone who loves skating, loves to move, kind of centers that in what you're doing and just kind of from there radiates and like shares that joy that you have for it and is really focused on like relationship, like relational stuff above anything, like above some of the like clickiness or again, the music stuff or anything else. I just see you as someone who's very focused on like being in a relationship with people and, and like also being in a relationship with yourself around skating. And I think for mm -hmm. me personally, that's really refreshing to see because in any subculture, it's really easy for there to be like a lot of clickiness or a lot of like weird social vibes sometimes or just like pickiness about the scene and stuff like that. And it's always really refreshing and nice to see people who are like, I'm literally just here to like have a nice time and like vibe with people in a nice way and like be together in this thing and like grow in this thing together. I think that's a big part of what sort of has drawn me to you as well as, as you know, a member in the community. And um, yeah, I just want to reflect that I really appreciate that about you and about your energy. I think our, all communities kind of need more of that <laughs> in a lot of ways, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a gift. I, Not everyone I, can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really thank you for saying that. I, I, you see me, I'm like, as you know, it's, I, I, I've seen the clicks. I've seen it done. I, I just don't like it. And like, I, like when you first meet me, it's the same. I, I have the same energy every time you see me. There's no change up. There's no switch up for, around me. I keep it 100 mm -hmm. from the get-go. You know, and then like we spoke about a while ago, it's like, you know what, I, I offer a safe space for my friends. I care about my friends and the people within my community. So that's important to me because this is a safe space for me. It helped me heal through a lot of mental health shit. You know, excuse my language. I'm sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're it, allowed it to swear, really by the way. I meant to tell you that before. Uh, Oh, Swear well, it helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, 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 helped, it, it, <laughs> it helped with a lot, with, uh, with a lot that I'm going through. The community helped out. The skating helped out. It was just like, instead of going and fall, falling deeper into a, like a depressive state, I would just go out and skate, grab my boombox, mm -hmm. go out anywhere, take a photo here with my camera on my phone and just enjoy myself i'm not going to be pent up in a box and put myself deeper into anything so i surround myself with beautiful people yeah meow <laughs> <laughs> the cat cosigns <laughs> i saw that you mentioned on instagram in a caption you mentioned that roller skating helps you to escape reality what do you think it is about roller skating that allows you to sort of transcend in that space when i said that whoa that's, that was nice okay um you don't think about what you're going through in life when you're skating when you're skating the first thing that you're thinking about is oh shit am i gonna bust my ass today <laughs> or <laughs> how much am i gonna do of this move or how much of this move et cetera, et cetera. So I don't really think about the life problems whenever I skate because it's irrelevant because that's, remember, that's a happy place for me. So mm. yeah, did that answer? I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems like, it seems like skating is both a place where you can compartmentalize, you know, like you're saying, like you get to kind of leave it at the door and you get to kind of put it down, you know, like when we're really going through stuff and we're thinking about it all the time, you know, it's like a lot to carry. And it sounds like skating is a space where you can kind of put it down for a second. So you don't have to carry it as much. And also a space where you can kind of like, almost like transmute some of those feelings, you know, it seems like skating is a mm -hmm. space where you can go and also maybe transform some of what it is feeling like in your body. So then, you know, I would imagine when you return to it later, it might feel just a little bit different, you know, like that's kind of what I'm getting from what you're sharing. And I wonder if that. Oh, resonates. when I came back, it was totally different. I was like, oh man, I got to readjust. <laughs> hmm. I got to really readjust, but I pushed myself, you know, I, I just didn't give up. I didn't stop. Mm -hmm. For listeners, what do you mean when you say when I came back? Oh, when I came back into skating from the dance world, like I After wanted to get break, back into yeah. it. I, yeah, that long break. So it was about, yeah. oh, wow, um, from 2007 out. So that was a long time till about 2015. I was slowly coming back into it because I was traveling. Uh, my my ex at the time lived in Taiwan. 
I lived, I was going back and forth between Taiwan and Japan. So I was bringing my skates over overseas to Japan and then Taiwan and roller skating out there and dancing and wow. DJing. So hmm. what was the, what was the street skating like in Japan? Cause I've heard different things. Like I've heard that you can't skate there. Is oh, you can get, you can get, true? yeah, you can't, you cannot, you cannot skate there in the street. You cannot skate there on, you can, can only do it in designated areas but it is banned in the street in japan wow you just get a ticket yeah, or same something thing. Or... yeah you, it's 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 frowned upon too they yeah. don't they don't see it and they, they're like okay you know you can't do this here in this country etc cetera, et cetera, against that and they'll they'll probably give you a warning mm. but if you are a resident it's a big difference so, yeah yeah that makes sense i wouldn't do it it's not worth the risk i did it already it's not worth the risk I, I'm letting y'all know. Man, <laughs> You're like, take my it. word for it. <laughs> do not do it. I've done it already. I've done it in Osaka, which was okay. You try to do that in Tokyo, it's a whole different story. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Tokyo seems like it runs like a well-oiled machine from what I can tell from, from afar. Just I've never like been New York. there, but I think of it as, but I think of it as like very orderly and like very clean. Yeah. But just like New York, busy. Yeah. Fast paced. <laughs> Yeah, busy. Fast paced yeah. and busy. <laughs> and you get a mix of everybody there. So I definitely want to loop back to Asia at some point because you spent a lot of time in Asia. But looping back to what we we're talking about, the mental health piece, I think we we're really getting somewhere with that before I derailed the conversation about street skating in Tokyo for my own curiosity. Um, but you <laughs> speak really openly about your state of mind and can you speak to the stigma you faced in being a man who candidly shares his mental health struggles? Because I know you talk a lot about men's mental health on your Instagram and you kind of wear your heart on your sleeve in that regard, which I think is really impressive. Uh, you have to break a chain of society and the stigma that is put upon us men, us people, us human beings. So I want to be that change. Now, according to my situation, I went through a lot of breakups. I went through a divorce. I went through a lot. And over that time, my dad passed away. I had, he died, my stepdad passed away from prostate cancer. It spread throughout his, mar his bone marrow. Then my dad passed away from COVID and respiratory problems last year. And in order for me to stay happy, the only thing that kept me really happy was being, again, around people within the skate community and skating and keeping me sane and having friends, letting me know that, you know what, you're better, you're unique, and you can always talk about your situations and we'll be here for you. And since then, that's been like everything. And I've, I've been an advocate myself personally, just I say to everybody, if you ever wanna talk, if you wanna sit down, I'm here. I know what you're going through, I've been through it. I'm not gonna go into full details of what my life has been, like <laughs> with all of that but yeah. i've been there done that and i'm here for y'all so mm -hmm. if anybody's listening to the podcast later you can always reach out to me and we can have discussions too frank's a real one frank's a real I one but i think the thing is frank like yeah that's the thing like and i feel like you know that's kind of a rare quality with a lot of men because it is something that isn't really like encouraged necessarily and i feel like a lot of men kind of go the other direction and they get really closed off or really hardened to kind of the emotional conversations and and i just want to highlight that um yeah there's a uniqueness to it you know and i guess i'm also curious about your motivations behind being more open it sounds like part of that motivation is like kind of breaking this societal chain right like this idea that men have to be kind of like hard and closed off you know and it sounds like you've taken it upon yourself to kind of like you want to change that cycle it. you know within yourself but i but i can't help but wonder so you know i can't help but wonder like you know what what's this dude been through but i just think it's i just think we need like more of that in our communities generally so it's definitely appreciated and felt thank you thank you max i appreciate that i was just highlighting you know i think it's it's yes. kind of rare to have someone who is again like a man specifically you know being open to kind of these things and it's it's the rarity important that we are talking about what it means to kind of break this cycle that's handed down to a lot of men that like you got to be strong quote unquote but that strong usually means like kind of hardened you know and like not willing to talk about 
your emotions or be real with people about it or hold space for other people, especially the holding space for other people part. You know, I've, I've met plenty of men who want to go on and on and on about how they feel, but in a way that's often kind of, you know, not super aware of the, um, the context that they're speaking in or, or where they're not also able to hold space for other people. But I feel like <laughs> you've kind of done a, b- both of those things, frankly, even in just a couple <laughs> of times that we've been around each other, you know, I've seen, I've witnessed you being able to do both. Um, yeah. And I guess my curiosity, if we do turn it into a question is just like, yeah, tell us more about like why that's important to you and where that comes from, you know? Um, yeah. You have to, yeah, I would say you have to go through a lot and just pay attention. And after things keep going, it's like that shit repeats, repeats, repeats. And you don't want to go through the same thing over and over. Mm-hmm. So you want to break that change. You want to, you want to see a difference. And I don't want to see the same thing within my community when it comes to men you know it's like me personally i want to be an example to be like you know what there's there's ways around being closed off you don't have to be closed off you don't have to be so negative against people and untrusty be optimistic be spontaneous go out experience things and speak with people have no intentions and have no expectations of anything so wait when, when I'm trying to relate it because it's like I, I listen to a lot of a lot of um my friends mm-hmm. talk and I'm like man don't you see a change and don't you want to change that <laughs> don't you feel like this this needs to be and they'd be like yeah okay so I want people to understand it like you know there's opportunities out mm-hmm. there if you closed off you're not going to be able to experience new things and as us we have to be strong and everything no you don't. Mm-mm. There's always a sensitive side to everybody, and you have to speak up about it. Ah, oh, you're speaking to my heart right now. At least the inner <laughs> child within you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You gotta love yourself too. <laughs> you gotta love yourself, and I and I do love myself, and that's why I'm still here. And I'm so glad you're still here, my dude. Yeah. So glad. Agreed. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I just wish that more, more uh, people within our community, within the world, just want to break this stigma of just a bad chain within the men in our community. Just, just want them to see that you know there's opportunities in everything that we do and what we speak. You know, sometimes we feel like we closed off and we don't have nothing. Did you have this frame of mind as a younger person or do you feel like it's something you grew into? Mm-hmm. Uh, I always wanted change when I was younger because I, I, I went to Catholic school growing up yeah. and I lived in the project. So it was like, it was rough. <laughs> I had to come back and change into the streetwear and whatnot. I couldn't wear the uniform coming back into the neighborhood. So it's... It's, yeah. I, I had a rough, I just wanted to see change, you know, I seen what people going through growing up, my family going through. I just, I didn't want to be the same. Like, I want to be unique, you know, like if I am unique. there was one piece of wisdom or knowledge that you could go back and give young Frank, what would it be when he was going through all of that? Or maybe several pieces of advice. Going through all of that? Uh... Mm-hmm. Take the time to appreciate everybody around you during that time of growing. You only get one of the same person that you're around. Mm-hmm. So treat every experience mm-hmm. like it's the last. Definitely a very powerful reflection. Mm-hmm. I know whenever I've lost somebody, that's always the first thing. Like I wish that I had spent more time with them. I wish that I had uh, taken more opportunities to connect with them. So, whew. You're beyond right about that. Beyond right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. You don't want to live with regret. And how they say FOMO, or you you don't want to miss out on a certain opportunity. How they say <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> you don't want to miss out on everything. So go out and do it. Here comes Frank with the levity. <laughs> Fear of missing out, baby. Yeah, I feel you. I feel oh, you. Oh, you're right. You're right. Hmm. I think what's so great is that this is, I think, what 
in many ways we want for this podcast is we want to be having, you know, the more real conversations that I think sometimes like, you know, we don't always get to have them when we're out on like a skate floor or when we're like, you know, skating or whatever. But I think part of our goal with the podcast at least is to like kind of humanize each other and like be able to tell people stories in a way where it's like, look, like we can have these hard conversations. We can start to talk about breaking some of the cycles that like impact our communities that make the communities difficult for some people to be in. Like, so Personally, I'm really grateful. I just am reflecting because I've lost a lot of trans people that I love and care about in the last couple of years. And like a lot of people in my extended communities have lost a lot of trans people too for a lot of different reasons. And yeah, I just, what you're saying like hits me trans in a certain lives way too. So true. I just was kind of taking a moment with that. But um, yeah, it's it's been it's been rough out here. So I think, yeah, I'm just relating to what you're saying. And yeah, really we're all people. It. And I would say overall, there's something about the gravity. Yeah. yeah. There's something about the gravity in which you speak that uh, warrants a level of, of reflection too, that feels kind of new to the conversations that we're having because, you know, we're having these moments of silence, but I don't feel like they're awkward silence. Like they feel very mm-hmm. contemplative because <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the stuff that you're saying really do- like what you just said about, you know, connecting with the people that are in your life while they're here that that really hit and I know that hit Jasmine for sure yeah Yeah. so and just what you were saying about losing people in recent years oh man me too whether it's family whether it's friends like it's happened and and I've lost a lot of friends to suicide too yeah so that's why I'm like you know I'm here y'all need me talk to me I'm here. Yeah. You know, that's my take on that. I'll just, I think too, there's something to be said for marginalized communities. And sometimes it does kind of feel like at the end of the day, like kind of all we have is each other, you know, like it, it really is like, it really does come down to the relationships sometimes. And like in a world where like some of the things that are rewarded are like dehumanizing other people for the people that are those people being dehumanized. It's like, well, if I can't rely on that shit, all I can really rely on are my relationships and my community members and stuff. And so I think it's like pretty important to also talk about this stuff and like, yeah, maybe we'll throw like a suicide hotline Mm -hmm. link in the, in the notes and stuff. But you know, for the record too, like I'm definitely here for folks too, to talk about this stuff. I've seen my own brushes with death in my own life. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, a lot of what you're saying is just really resonating with me personally, and I'm just grateful for it, you know? Yeah. I third that mm. if anybody needs someone, I'm here too. Always reach out. And if you want to go skate, call me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Message me, call Hell me. Yeah. We can go always go skate. Hell yeah. I'm always down. Hell yeah. And I know where the best parties is at too. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's the total package, y'all. So Frank will partner skate with you, know where all the best spots are, go out anytime you want. <laughs> sure you're good time. Um, but sure you're good time. It, okay, but speaking of still being here, you've had a lot of fucking injuries. A lot of injuries that I've heard of, at least. Probably Jasmine's uh, heard of some too. Yeah, I saw him in I've the been... shop today and we talked about a bunch of them that I didn't even know about until today. Frank, I'm worried. Frank. Uh... Uh, my broken hand. The first one was my broken hand. Um, I broke my fourth and fifth metacarpal. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, my fourth, my pinky and my ring finger. My knuckles just pushed back and shattered my wrist from fighting, trying to survive somebody that tried to stab me with a knife. Mm-hmm. Um, second, I got hit by a car. I got doored. And I broke my toe, my finger, tore a ligament in my ankle, and uh, water, water in my knee. What wheels were you on when you ran over again? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, I was on my bike. Oh, okay, damn. So I went into a door, and it slingshot me into an SUV, which ran over my ankle (sighs) Mm -hmm. and my foot, and dragged me. So thankful to be alive. Yeah. And then the second time, somebody ran me over from behind and kept going. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's awful. Okay, so speaking of yeah. some of that stuff. So still pushing through it. Yeah, well, and I guess one of the questions I have is how do you kind of like manage skating with some of that stuff, you know? Um, I'm sure there are people on the that are listening that can relate to like it. chronic injuries and stuff, you know? You just don't think about it? Uh, uh, I really don't think of it. Yeah, I don't think about it. I just work out. I exercise. I stretch. Mm-hmm. I roll my. I roll. Use my foam roller. Do everything. I do need to go see a doctor. 
to get everything checked out for physical just to make sure everything is all right yeah you know it's important but i i still feel like a little pain in my knees but i've been doing a lot of squats <laughs> <laughs> lots of squats well, lots of dips everything you, just to try and keep my mobility mm -hmm. you did tell me today when i saw you at the shop you told me about some adjustments that you make to some of your floor work like keeping the weight out of your wrists when you're doing floor work and i thought that was super interesting can you tell the listeners oh, about that um you think of it like a spring your arms as a spring you mm -hmm. have to think of it like when you go to you want to be as light as possible landing your foot or your hands onto the floor, using your elbows as a spring to lightly go down and then push back up. That will give you momentum to do whatever you feel like doing that's in your head within that that move set list, whether it's on the floor or not. But I'm like, you gotta have strong shoulders to do that. So you have to too. think of it like a, a <laughs> coil spring. But it's an and awesome that's tip. I said you gotta do them dips. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Dips are good for that. Dips, Triceps and shoulders. You yeah. gotta do them dips. Because yeah. that way of thinking comes in handy whether you're injured or you're looking to prevent injury. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of brilliant. I mean, that's why I still <laughs> work out. Is like I'm just trying to prevent injuries kind at of, this point in my life. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people when they flail their arms backwards, they keep their arms in a locked position. Mm -hmm. And that can cause injury. So it's always good to use it like a spring, like a suspension spring. Mm -hmm. So always when you go back, you think of it as to lightly place fingers, then palm, elbow bend, and then back up and push back up into a position which you're <laughs> going to get locked up and freeze. I know. Yeah. I keep trying to do my like falling, Man, falling back I'll on my arm you. dip moment, okay. but I keep fucking up my shoulders because my shoulders are fucked up anyway. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I got to work on it. I do those, dude. <laughs> I'm doing those. I'm doing those. Try some extensions. I'm doing those. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> you got to do them more springy. <laughs> I, I guess I got to think about it different. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Clearly working out is a really important self-care ritual for you that keeps you skating. Are there any other self-care rituals that you swear by that keep you moving, keep you going, if only psychologically? Uh, meditation. Mm -hmm. Clear your mind. Yeah, meditation. And then I usually do 30 minutes of meditation and about 30 minutes of stretching right after it. Mm -hmm. That's like every day? So about an hour in my day, just about every morning. Mm -hmm. Yep, every morning and at night. Mm -hmm. If I'm too tired to do it, I'm gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a particular flow? to it or is there like is there a particular stretch routine you do actually or is it more of a flow state like you do with your skating or your dancing uh when i stretch it's more of like i'm using my foam rollers i got a bunch of foam rollers and stuff that i like to stretch and meditate with and then i mean i do more stretching when i go to skate events like when i do like my my prep to get warmed up because it's a lot. Um, mm. I would do a lot more on the mobility of the lower core. So you'll see me stretching up against the wall, doing splits and whatnot. I'll be on my toes and my skates and I'll be sitting on, on, uh, on the manuals on the toes, just trying to get my knees prepped for it. Mm. And then I'll bounce up and down, up and down or I'll hold the wall and I'll do a squat in the pointed position that's like getting to your quads and stuff too kinda. just to like get myself ready yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything i'm working everything out mm -hmm. and when it comes to that floor work your shoulders is going to be in pain too mm -hmm. yeah that's what i'm saying yeah uh. yeah that that kind of relates to what i was going to ask you which is you said that when you're skating you don't really think about the pain but then you also tell me you know there are instances instances when you're on skates for 12 hours which is so impressive i don't know how you do it oh yeah but uh, how like, you must be in pain at some points like how do you how do you push through that pain because even when i'm like skating on concrete for too long my knees are killing me um you're gonna feel it the next day <laughs> so you're gonna have that mental prep like yeah i'm gonna pay for it tomorrow i already know <laughs> but um 
trial and error with your skates. So when you are skating for like maybe four hours and it's like, oh, it's comfortable. You think about what socks she was wearing. You think about how, how did you lace them up that day and whatnot. You know, you want to provide the best comfortability during a long lasting skate session. So for me, I'm traveling, I'm going in the train station with the skates and whatnot. I'm going from one event to another. I'm going here and I haven't taken them off. My feet are sweaty, you know, like they're a little bit sweaty. And then, but I'm still comfortable. Like I recommend getting some uh, memory foam insoles. Mm -hmm. Take it from me. They feel like Ugg boots. <laughs> you put your, your, your insoles that you get from Rydell on top of the memory foam and you set. It's going to feel like an Ugg boot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The, you have to be more comfortable on your skate. Like, you, you have to feel it out and break your skates in. So you have to do a lot of trial and error. What What's this going to be this way? And then it becomes a memory process. And then as soon as you lace up, you're going to be like, oh, I laced it this way. Oh, I'm ready for 12 hours. I'm not even going to think about my feet hurting and nothing because I already know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would I would say go through a trial and error process with it, mm -hmm. like what works best for long lasting. Yeah, and it sounds like in some ways you're also kind of good at compartmentalizing your pain a little bit, or kind of like pushing it out of your mind a little bit, and kind of just like skating through it at times. Oh, That's you got how you strike me, you know. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta say no. <laughs> sometimes you gotta tell yourself no. I reject this feeling in my body. It's Which not is hard, pain. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I rebuke you. Um, sometimes you just gotta be like, <laughs> you, you gotta like, okay, take it easy. You can test the limits mm -hmm. of it. If you feel a pinch or a pain, take it easy and test. It's okay to test limits. Don't go things full on out. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes it looked like I'd be going full on out on certain things, but I've been testing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know a certain limit. Mm -hmm. Don't try this at home. <laughs> like you won't see me. Yeah, you won't be seeing me doing full on sit and toe spins for a minute until my knees get more stronger. Even though I did one in the shop. You were doing all kinds of spins. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> You're doing corkscrews, floor work. Yeah. Well, the fit. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I think I appreciate about watching you skate too is I can I can literally see you testing those limits because you're also like it seems like not super afraid of of falling. And I see you a little. I like literally watch your process of you like like I I think when we were at Pier seventy six last time. Um, I saw you doing like some toe spins and you did kind of like spin out and you ended up like falling back at one point, but also like, that's literally the way that you learn your limits is by being willing to kind of throw yourself into it and like feel that edge a little bit. And I really see that process when you're skating, which is pretty inspiring to me. Cause I feel like with roller derby, I was always really good at pushing those limits for myself. But when it comes to rhythm skating, I, I always get real nervous about it. So I always kind of hold myself back and I keep myself definitely in a little bit of a comfort zone with it. Um, so it's really that energy that you give off when you're skating is always nice for me because I'm like, oh, okay, I can go there a little bit too. Like, okay, I can get there. Um, so it's cool to like, kind of watch mm -hmm. you do that as well. Um, just again, for, for listeners and for my own reflection and appreciation for you, for sure. Yeah. Imagine you doing your rhythm skating and you start hitting people with this and then bow. Ooh, oh, they go over there. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to hit nobody. <laughs> Flying by. <you> know. <laughs> I think what Frank is saying is that he That's wants you to hit him. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. We could go to that dynamic, I guess. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Watch out now. Watch out now. I'm not trying to cause you any more injuries. <laughs> At least non-consensual injuries, I guess. <laughs> right? Remember, uh, remember I, I said no more. No more for me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh, naughty. <laughs> LOL. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shame. Shame. <laughs> 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 Bright and a little, 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 little contagious. <laughs> contagious. <laughs> Laughter. Is speaking of sharing space with others, oh, you are a consummate 
partner skater and I always see you skating with different partners and switching it up and doing different styles. What advice would you have for folks who are uninitiated to partner skating, which includes me? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it takes a lot of trust. That's why I say you got to be open and just don't have no expectations. Don't, don't think, don't have no expectations of it. Just go and do it and trust the person that you're skating with to, and learn from them. You just gotta, just gotta be open. Everybody will teach you, and you can always learn from people, and you can feel that connection when you partner skating with people. Hmm. Yeah, I think that that's something that I have yet to tap into. It. Usually, when people grab my hand to partner skate with me, I just feel like they're taking me for a ride, and I'm just like, Whoa! <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like that was not for you. Like it's a really good night. All the way, <laughs> all the way, all the way. I think it's hard. Like I struggle with connecting. Oh my because... god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's hard. Like when you're in your head, it, you like necessarily can't connect <laughs> with other people. And like I get in my head, and then it's like hard to feel the connection because I'm too stressed about what I'm doing or whatever. And literally, when we were skating, Frank kept being like, "Get out of your head, just, just, just do it, just chill." And I kept being like, "I don't know which direction am I turning? I don't know, I don't know." And Frank was like, "Bro, chill." I was like, "I can't." <laughs> but it's true. It's like I guess there's something to be said too for if you can if you can trust yourself and trust the other person to be vulnerable enough vulnerable enough to actually connect with them that is a thing that helps you get out of your head you know and that you know if you struggle with connection maybe partner skating can be hard in certain ways if you don't have the technique of it down too and i appreciate that lens of like just connect with the other person and like let them like trust them you know but there's a vulnerability yeah, in that it's you can always <laughs> speak about it you could yeah there's a lot of vulnerability because a lot of people don't they don't they don't uh they don't partner skate mm-hmm they want to, but then they, they're afraid of the, the connection that they get from it. Mm-hmm. That's why I said it's so hard to trust it. But when it comes to people like moi, I'm okay with everybody. So, like, if you grab my hand, if I grab your hand, you know you're going to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Just got to trust me. I can you know, attest like, to this. For other people, I can't say that. Yeah, <laughs> I would trust you, but I don't know about just I can't anybody. Say that for other people. <laughs> yeah. And you got to build that trust and you watch them and you, and you ask them, be like, Hey, uh, how, how long have you been doing that? And they be like, Oh, I've been doing this and this and that. Could you possibly dance with me and show me? Sure. No problem. And then that's how you learn. And that's how you be open about it. Mm. And then once you do it and then you'd be like, okay, I got a grip of it. Next person, you learn from the next person, learn from the next person, dance with the next person. And you get an understanding of how everybody skates. Mm. and how it's supposed to be done and then you get you, sometimes you get clicky sometimes you get clicky you get that one person that you skate good with you like i always got to skate with this person mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie that would totally be me but yeah, i was trust like i feel good with that person the main thing so. that. <laughs> yeah it's, i mean i think a lot of you know i think it's natural for humans to tend towards like comfort and once you build that comfort with one person it's easy to just kind of stay in that zone so yeah i kind of get it but also like i really like the approach of like part of what i love about skate community is that like, so many people are open to like learning off of each other and like vibing with each other and teaching each other through just like existing together and skating next to each other like i have a really fond memory of skating with Lene at uh, Brooklyn Skates and like I learned so much from Lene and we didn't even really talk hardly mm-hmm. at all we just skated next to each other a bunch that night and Lene would start doing something and I would just mimic what Lene was doing then I would start doing something and Lene would try to do what I was doing and that's kind of all we did all night and we just had a really nice connection with it we weren't really partner skating but we were just yeah just like kind of connecting and exchanging. learning from each other and exchanging you know and then there didn't have to be much more than that for it to be for me at least a really stand out and like special memory Because Lene is like, you know, a little bit of a legend and like also just real good at skating and stuff and like, you know, has her own really awesome energy a lot of the time and stuff. And like, I think like in a lot of sports communities I've been a part of for most of my life. Yeah, me too. And a lot of sports communities, it's like way more of a competition vibe. So it's like we're pushing each other to get better, but it's not always through connect. Like sometimes with your teammates, there's really good connection and that can feel really nice. But there's also this level of like, there's an other, there's a competitor, there's like whatever and like in the skate community, it can be competitive. Like, you know, it's, we are kind of trying to push each other and, and whatever, but like, but again, <laughs> like so much of it can also literally just be about like connecting with ourselves, connecting with other people 
especially as music is involved and like rhythm in the rhythm skating specifically mm. in kind of that realm, you know, it's really, it's nice. I don't know, but it is, it's very vulnerable. Like it, it's, it's hey, always and, been very intimidating also, for me in that way. And also to add on to the partner skating, yeah. the also to the add on to the partner skating, it is a socializing dance and skate. Mm -hmm. You socialize when you partner skating, you mm -hmm. can talk to the person. Yeah, not not, not going to be mute when you're skating, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to be screaming. You know, when you're skating together. So you search a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Jasmine's just screaming <laughs> around the rink. You hear her, like, coming in. She's, like, louder. And then all of a sudden, she's further away, but still screaming. And, like, I just closer and screaming. I just picture myself, like, frantically laughing the whole time. And being like, what? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I think that's what would happen. Well, I know that's what would happen because it's happened. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, gotta give it, gotta give it. Well, the summertime we're going, we're going definitely going to skate, and you're going to be screaming, and it's going to be on film. Nice. Hearing, hearing you guys talk about this, and for listeners who don't already know this, Mac and Frank both have been skating through most of their lives i feel like that's a fair way to put it and i'm a relatively new skater in the grand scheme of things and i feel like i never got to that point where i let go of wanting control and i'm always panicking over like not having control over my body control over the situation mm. and i feel like i have this deep need for control <laughs> and i can't get hold of it so i'm just always freaked out mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why you I gotta let that go that's why i like park <laughs> skating because when you're on the ramp and you you've dropped in you don't have a choice you have to let go there's no not letting go yeah or else if you do get too rigid <laughs> hey you're gonna invite me i, 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 I do want to go park skating with y'all yeah you're gonna invite me to that i yeah. feel like you'd be I do so good go park it. Skating. it would be good yeah you really I would. love park skating are you kidding me yeah, because yeah. you already have an aggressive. I, I want to go. Oh, yeah. So whenever like, y'all go, friend. let me know. Yeah. Let's do it, Frank. I'm down. An invite. Hell yeah. I'm down. Yeah, tell us when you're Watch, free. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like you always make time. Yeah, we go, and I'm going to put, we're going to partner skate inside the bowl. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bowl I'll bring my speaker. <laughs> it's perfect. Do swing spins on you. The bowl will amplify all my screams. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> I'm gonna be up on top taking film of it all. Don't worry, <laughs> listeners. You'll have a video shortly. Don't no, worry. No, shoot. You'll be laughing. <laughs> Boy, are you crying? <laughs> both. I'm doing both. Simultaneously. You crying? Ooh. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Um, That's my natural state. I, I, I actually, cry. I, <laughs> I actually love the fact that y'all yeah, come from the different world. Like we all similar, and I love the fact that y'all come from the derby, just just everything. It's all coming together, and I like that Mac was open to coming out and doing rhythm skating. I love it, and having Alex there also. Shout out to Alex, Alex. coming out there and just enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Like I, I, I want I want all my friends to experience that and I want to experience that with them. Just like we all coming out and just having a good time. So we gonna have a good session. Watch. I'm ready. We're gonna have a good session. Just wait. I'm trying to focus on myself this summer a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit more of a hustle in certain areas financially, but I, I'm gonna have like more time, like just an energy during the week. So I'm like actually gonna be able to like get out more and like come skate more. And that's like one of the big things on my radar. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna be out more this if year. If you got 40 to an hour, if to an hour to two hours of your time, and you wanna meet up, skate, hang out, you let me know. Hell yeah, I will for sure. It'll it's it'll happen for sure. I'm ready. I'm unemployed. I, I that's why I'm like sponsoring me, y'all. You know, like I'm I'm going day by day working <clears> as <throat> well, trying to try to make it. <clears throat> we need to make a skate video of you go viral. <laughs> I'm here for that. That's I right. feel like that's how you're gonna <laughs> get the let's sponsorship because you have it. the virality qualities. People just have to and it has to be skill. the right video and this fucking skill. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, that's one of the qualities for yeah, sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, so like, I've 
I've I've got had some opportunities come my way. I've done some work, but you know, like I'm still open to opportunities coming. Like I'm just watching everything come and I'm listening, just keeping the door open, not being closed off. Yeah. Hmm. Being patient. Mm-hmm. I'm I trying to something's good coming my way. I'm trying to get some of that energy for myself because I'm in like a transition period where I'm like, I really don't know what's next. I'm just trying to like focus on getting some of my shit together a little bit and like focus on like doing stuff that makes me happy and like focus on my relationships. And I'm trying to be like, I don't got to panic. Like I'm just going to keep an eye out and I'm going to wait and I'm going to like let the right thing come through, you know, but it's kind of hard sometimes to keep that energy, Mm -hmm. you know. The fact is, you're not trying; you're doing it. Mm-hmm. That's very true. I you're right. That. <laughs> you're doing it. That's you're that's right. what matters the most. <laughs> they are actually doing it for sure. Y'all and then right. the acronym for push, you should always push. The acronym for push: pray until sun happens. All right, hell yeah! I'm gonna take that with me. It's part of being patient. So, when I was lurking your Instagram and looking into everything that you're doing online, because, you know, obviously we'd already known you in person, but it adds another level because you have those words on a page, on a screen, if you would. And something that really came to the forefront for me is how good you are at improvising in general. Can you speak to the importance of improvising on skates, but also improvising in life? Uh, and that split moment, like, okay, I I I always improvise when I fall because you never want you never want to see people you know never want people to see you uh, mess up. So in your mind, you always want to you don't like for instance, for example, if you fall, if you're doing a move and you go and you fall, the best way to prevent that fall is to do a move that's incorporated into that fall. So that's improvising on that spot. And then as you're doing that move, you, you're doing a combination and then you go back up into a stand position. So I would say I improvise that way. I don't want people to see me mess up. <laughs> so I always improvise. You know, I always think, I always think ahead, like, what if this happens in my mind? Like, I'm like a third person, like, I'll see it in that split second as I'm getting ready to almost fall. You'll see me tuck, kick a leg out, go out and then do floor work. I'm a little surprised to hear that you don't want people to see you mess up. Where do you think that instinct comes from? Because, I mean, I feel the same way. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Sometimes... (laughs) It, it's it's from the dancers it's it's from the dancer in me it's like i don't want people and the performer in me i don't mm. want people to see me mess up so i will always prefer i will always improvise especially performing i was always told if you fuck up try to do something flashy yeah <laughs> make it seem like it didn't you know on, on, or... on performances so it's not coming from a place of shame it's coming from a place of performing is what i'm hearing yeah that's really interesting no shame in it yeah, there's no shame in it. It's just like, yeah, you you want to give people this idea, you know. Yeah, you might fall, but yo, look what he just did as he fell. Yeah. That takes a lot. Some people, when they fall, they down for the count. I have to imagine some of that comes with just like athleticism and experience though too, like, and having put your body in a bunch of weird positions. Because I'm thinking about like people that are like brand new to skating <clears throat> and kind of like if you don't have the muscle memory, like being able to do it in those moments is like a little bit hard, but I know like for me too, just having fallen so much in roller derby, like there's certain ways I can kind of like protect myself or my body just knows to like do certain things when I fall or to kind of recover in certain ways. So I feel like part of it too is probably like the fact that you've Mm -hmm. been doing it for so long and probably from such a young age too, that probably like props that up a little bit for you. I think even with some beginner skaters, it triggers it triggers that in you. Yeah, there's like this very roller skater signature thing of falling down and striking a pose. LOL. <laughs> even if you can't make it into a move, you can make it into a pose. <laughs> oh my goodness! You better stay flashy, stay yeah. classy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Yeah, you like that? That was nice. That was what that was called my death drop right there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's literally exactly what I was thinking of. I was like, turn everything into a death drop. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I love it. Uh, in life, you know, you you want to improvise mm. when you're thinking. So, I mean, it's just it's almost the same with skating. Like you know, when you're skating, you you're feeling the movement. You're feeling the momentum, so you're gonna try something, and you're just gonna you're gonna feel that body, and you're gonna go with it. You're not gonna restrict yourself because you're the person that's gonna be able to stop yourself from doing stuff. You're the you're the restriction. So mm-hmm. if you knock that out, you'll be able to do stuff. But like you said, for beginner skaters, they have to drill, get the get, gain the muscle memory, let go of the fear of falling, fall. It's okay, mm-hmm. but fall properly. Mm-hmm. Learn to tuck. Go into the fetal position. Mm-hmm. Tuck and roll. Don't flail your hands out. Wear protective gear. Practice with protective gear. Majority of the people that you see outside that do not have protective gear, they have been skating for years. You know, and then and then they do trial and error. Like they learn from it. So, as a new skater, the best advice for them to just. Lose the fear of falling. Lose the fear of who's watching you and stop worrying about what people are talking or thinking of when you're skating because you're the one that's actually working on yourself and you're the one that's actually working on your own skating. So the hell with whoever's thinking this, this, and that. You're the one that's doing the work. So I say take time to study speak with people, learn, ask them, be like, hey, do you know how to do this? What's the best way to fall? And some people will tell you, like, yo, curl up into a ball and roll. Yeah, you might have a little scratch, but that saves you a dislocated joint, a broken finger, you know, wrist, elbow, whatever. Busted lip, it'll stop you from all of that. And then you'll learn the restrictions within your skate. And proper skate etiquette, you guys work on that because you're from the shop. Tighten down your truck. Make mm-hmm. sure your bolts is good. I learned my lesson today. Mm-hmm. I have a broken kingpin. <laughs> I feel but, like I'm, yeah, I'm such a stickler for that at the skate shop. I'm always like, if I see people bring shit in that's not well adjusted that they want me to fix for them, I'm like, the first thing we're going to talk about is how you're not going to adjust it this way ever again because I do not want to have to fix this for you again <laughs> like this and you're not doing it right. Like, <laughs> I'm like, get it. I'm like, get it That's together. That's why I do my own <laughs> shit. <laughs> I know. I seen your pivot cups. That's why I do my I know. Own shit. <laughs> I was like, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Going back to the falling a little bit. That when customers come into the shop and they're really scared about the falling, I always will demo falls for them. I'm like, go as close to the ground as you can. To begin with, start low. Then when you fall, you won't have as far to fall from. Mm-hmm. And pick a cheat or pick a thigh. Do not choose your wrists. Mm. <laughs> and I'll literally fall on the ground for them mm. on my thigh. I'm like, like this. <laughs> yeah, don't use your knees. Don't fall and use mm-hmm. your knees at all. Fall on your butt mm-hmm. teeth. Mm-hmm. If you can help it, for sure. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Tuck and roll. I fell on my knees plenty of times and I regret it. Mm-hmm. do not go forward yeah. stay away yeah, from going bad. forward yeah in derby it's a lot of knee falling which is why we have like those tear your meniscus pads, but yeah it's fucked up it's fucked um, up the triple eight yeah i was yeah, actually in s1s eight. i was in s1s and i was in um tsgs actually i really like both of those brands in terms of the quality of the knee pads and stuff but a lot of people are in the 187s too for Derby, at least, but I love a good save CSG. your knees if you can. Yeah, like full real. padding, you'll be beating each other up. <laughs> you'll be it's beating each other rough. up. Pretty rough on that. <laughs> hmm. I've I've had a pair of Derby skates, which is what my sure grip. I don't know what happened to them anymore, but I had a pair. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? I had a pair of Derby skates. I liked them for the street. Mm-hmm. Love them. They're good for the street. Fine. Not having a heel in you the street is nice. Up. What? Straight guard. And 
you can just push off with the front two, the front two wheels. Yep. You're gone. Yeah. You just keep going, cross in, cross that, shuffle. Yeah, I, I liked it for that, but I need ankle support, so mm-hmm. um trying to trying to save up for some thirty two hundreds, right? Yeah. I'm trying to save up for some thirty two hundreds. Let's get you some fucking thirty two hundreds. That's sick. So we gotta get you out of those one twenties. My boot is ripping already as we speak. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the investment. And you wanna know something funny? Look, check this out. Since yeah, I can see it, I'm gonna show you a little little history. So my skates were uh they are sentimental as I spoke to y'all a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I still have my box from 16 years ago. Holy shit. Oh, cool. That is an old Red L box, just for listeners. Uh, and I got it from Leslie Leslie Skate School. Yeah, sick. I've seen that name a couple of times in New York, actually, um, on the bottoms of people's skates and stuff. Yeah. Leslie yeah. Zeering. He started Central Park. He was part ownership. He started uh, Brooklyn Skates. He also had a, a school within the Roxy. Hmm. within That's the cool. Roxy Club, the skate club. So he started the uh, Leslie Zaring Skate School. So he would teach you. He was always the purple jester, him and him and his uh, wife, uh, Robin Zaring. They would be at Central Park Dance Skaters Association with Bob Nichols out there. And they'd be, they'd be skating out there. You'll see him wearing a purple jester outfit, everything purple. So like you see my purple stoppers and whatnot. I have like purple and green or purple and red to show commemorance to uh, Leslie. But this is an old, old box. Yeah, Robin still comes into the <laughs> shop from time to time, and she usually will talk a lot about Leslie. Mm. And they still, she still has the apartment up in uh, Union Square. Where is it? Washington Square. She's still over there. Beautiful <laughs> apartment and three cats. And three cats. <laughs> Chubby cats. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, I got to retire these. Uh, yeah, I got to retire these soon, though. So I can hang them and then, you know, put them up next to the box. Yeah, I can appreciate that sentimental value. You know, I can I can definitely appreciate that sentimentality. Was that your first that wasn't your first pair of skates though? That was just like like what's the what's the relationship you have to that particular box? First pair from him? From him. I treated I treated Leslie like a mentor and then when he was sick, um and he was in the hospital after just multiple injuries and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I got my skates from him way before he passed away so and i wanted a pair of Rydell's, but he was the only Rydell, um mm-hmm. like seller within the area you know you had to go far and wide just to get it or order it and he sized up my own foot he got, he got me a d with because i'm flat-footed and he sized it up for me right there in his house and whatnot he had me try on different different styles and whatnot and he, I was like, you know what, I, I'm. This is more affordable for me, and and he helped me out with my That's first awesome. pair of Rydell skates. Now I wasn't using Rydells. I was using Chicago's. I was using Sure Grip, and I was also using like aggressive inline. So these were like my first pair that I paid for, like out my pocket, and I paid a pretty penny for these when they came yeah up. that's cool just so you yeah just just to relate to that um i've had quite a few folks who have like like older pairs of skates who come through to the skate shop and i see there's like um the, it's printed on the bottom of the boot too like leslie and that they came from leslie and it's kind of cool to see that and like really see that like living history when i'm working on skates and stuff which is nice i don't think i knew that about your 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 history there we're we're curious about who your skate yeah. mentors have been um it sounds like I, leslie was one of them you know have you had other folks in the community that have kind of been like mentors to you oh um easy jeff selby jeff selby and his brothers the selby brothers uh skate legend boo and terry og terry out in branchbrook shout out to og terry but the biggest one for me was Jeff Selby and his brothers out in Empire. They were like my biggest mentors, just watching them skate, doing street dance and house dance on skates in the club and inside Empire mm-hmm. just blew my fucking mind because that's what I wanted to do. So like just being around them and just learning from them, just watching, it was just like, oh, I, I love you guys. And to this day, I'm still <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm always around them. So Jeff, I I do new style hustle with, which is a 
partner dancing. You know, we do hustle. It's like hustle ballroom style dancing. And we're using different styles of dance com- cool. and music, not just uh, sticking to disco. We're using all types of music, uh, new style. So with him, it's new style hustle, but he was also a referee at Empire. And I will always get in, get him for free sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to blow him up, but I used to get him for free a lot. Um, me and the guys, we used to come there. And anytime we see him and his brothers and the cypher or in the middle or just skating around, it was just like, it was just like, you ever sit there and you'd be like this, just star found it, like, yeah. shocked, like, Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, this might be a silly question, but I think for listeners, maybe good. Like, what defines like hustle as like a dance style? Uh, what defines hustle as a dance style? It's a social dance, a partner dancing. Meaning what? Social dancing, meaning you socialize with the person that you're dancing with and you so also it, it express like not... dance within the music. You are both are move, moving in unison to the music. Okay. So it sounds like it's less about like specific techniques or specific moves and more about the way you're relating to the music and the dance. I mean, there is a lot of techniques, this foundation that you have to abide by. There's always foundation with any dance or any anything. So once you stick to the foundation, you can always you can always add on to mm-hmm. the foundation and, and put onto your own style. Mm-hmm. Same thing when you're learning with people with skating. When you watch them, you learn that move from them and you put your you adapt your own style and your own your own twist to it. So with with partner dancing as far as hustle, you can look at um, mm-hmm. Saturday Night Fever as a reference, John Travolta. That's a good reference for That's listeners. Hustle. Thank you. I'm sure plenty of listeners can understand that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What you see them dancing to disco, what you see them doing during the, the 80s, 70s, and the disco era, that was hustle. Yeah. Thank you. I think that gives a good visual to listeners. Yeah. It's also yeah, a partner dance and social dance. Yeah, go go check it out. And then if you're interested in New Style Hustle, you can also check out Jeff Selby, New Style Hustle worldwide. We're in Japan, Europe, everywhere. We can link some stuff too. Yeah. Give people the, the kind of visual reference. Check out my mentors and learn from them. Is there anything that you would really like to touch on that we haven't? And also, you know, I have a few other small questions for you at the end, but. Nah, shoot them questions. I'm loving it. <laughs> we love silly questions okay so i'll start what? with the silliest question that i have what was it like to meet keanu reeves <laughs> <laughs> we have major keanu reeves crushes so we have to know wow um all right so funny story um i used to work security for uh 125 broad street and he was shooting john wick within the financial district area. So down by South Street and Water Street. And this trailer was right outside my building that I'm posted in front of. So I'm smoking a cigarette, drinking drinking my coffee. And I see him just sitting outside his trailer. Nobody recognizes him. Nobody. Nobody bothers him. I'm not going to bother him. I'm standing on my post. So I just look at him and go, good morning. <laughs> good morning. He said, hey, good morning. And he's humble. Super humble. Like the sweetest person you'll ever meet. It's just respect his space and respect him as a person and then you know you get stuff like <laughs> i was just chill about it and he was like you want a picture i was like fuck you i love that he picture. offered it <laughs> yeah that's kind of nice. <laughs> and I, I had a good conversation with him and i had a good conversation with him because i treated him like a person and not just somebody famous and i and i think i do that within any kind of scene too i don't be like starstruck but i was just like yo yeah He's just like us, but he's the sweetest person you'll ever meet. I'll tell you that much. And he's quiet, calm. He just yeah. likes his quiet time. <laughs> he's like, he, he loves his me time. I can tell that. Everybody's walking by and not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> like, Do y'all know that John, John Wick is sitting right here? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I feel that same way. Like, I don't really get the celebrity yeah, thing, kind of, because I feel like people love to, like, pedestalize people. And I'm like, they're literally just human beings who want to be related to, like, a human being. And when you're pedestalizing this person, you're automatically kind of dehumanizing them. That's because it. you're treating them in some kind of way where it's actually more about your feelings about them than it is about who they are as a person and how they are showing up in the space, too. You know? And it's like, I don't, that dynamic has always made me real uncomfortable. Shit. I wanted to know, I wanted to know more about him, like, personally, not. Not just like on the actor's level, yeah. I wanted to know the ways he thinks. Like, how does yeah. he go about on his day to day basis? 
you know, like that. But you can't ask that when he's got taking his time and doing his coffee. I think stuff. he does his own stunts too. He's one of those actors. But he's really uh, yeah, uh, he's so hot. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, he does, and you can see. And I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, you can see all the bruises on his hands too. Mm. Like you can see everything. Like he works. There's no bullshit behind it. I love Keanu Reeves. That's my mm-hmm. shit. Bill and Ted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? That's old school right there. <laughs> yeah, cool. I love Bill and Ted. You said you had another Keanu Reeves question? No, that was my only Keanu Reeves question. My other questions are a lot less silly, but um, can you tell us what it was like coming up in the arcade scene in New York City? Because I know you have a history with arcades like Chinatown Fair. Oh. Oh, okay. Growing up in the projects, me and the guys, we were called like nerds because we liked it, like anime, we liked games, we were like big on video games. Like my first console was a ColecoVision and an Atari 2600. So, and then I had the Game Boy Brick, which is around here somewhere. Um, me and the guys, we loved Chinatown so much. And then we came across Mott Street and Elizabeth Street. That's when they had the mall and all these these the Gundams and everything. It was like, oh, the import stores is here out here. Oh, this and that. We can get the games from J and L. Oh, sweet. The arcade is here. Oh, they got all of this, this, this. And we just lost it. And me and the guys, we spent a lot of time out there. Whether it was either skating at the Brooklyn Banks and getting mm. kicked out, skating by the World Trade Center. And getting chased. <laughs> and then going into the get dumplings at Wohop. Mm-hmm. And then going straight across the street to China Fair Arcade, where as soon as you open the door, you smell nothing but musty arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as you open the door, it smells like nothing but sweat and armpits. Yeah. And that carpet absorbs it all, too. <laughs> oh my God. And you got, you got people playing Street Fighter, Tekken. Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah. Just competition. And it was other places too. Like me and the guys, we, we were battling people. We were like playing, playing, just beating people left and right. But then it got tiring. You know, you're wasting money. Then life hits you. You want to do other things growing up, right? You don't want to be stuck in there. And then us, we were rebels. We wasn't allowed to come into the city by ourselves. So fuck it. We took the bikes and we was out. <laughs> Skateboards, bikes, and we rode over the bridge. Yeah, of course. Because Fort Greene is right there. So it's like, why not? Dumbo, downtown Brooklyn. So all you got to do is go over the Manhattan Bridge and you're in Chinatown. They just opened up Brooklyn Banks for skating again. Do you think you're going to hit up that spot again? Or what do you think? I you know. know? <laughs> I cannot wait to go. <laughs> Look, I, I, you see I already had the board out <laughs> yesterday. I cannot wait to go. That's why I'm like, I got my skates back. Oh, if I had my aggressies, ooh, if I had my aggressive, I'd go out there. But I'll injure myself on purpose just for the banks. Not on purpose. <laughs> no, uh, no more injuries. We've established this as a rule for you. Because I already know if I do aggressive, if I do aggressive style and I start doing all of that and I have all my skate and I have all aggressive skates on, like I already know I'm going to injure myself. I'm going to fall consistently and I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep going. I know myself. I'm not going to want to stop. I love New York for that stuff. It's like, I was just like, I don't know. Since living here, I've had a lot. I live, I stay by Chinatown right now. And like, I love Mott Street. There still is like a little little arcade over there, like a little family arcade or whatever that I go to sometimes, which is kind of fun. And it's nice to be like, oh, I'm skating over in this one area of Manhattan. Then I'm like skating over to this other spot. I'm getting my favorite bubble tea at this one spot in Chinatown, popping by this one store. And then I'm going to like go down to the waterfront and like skate by the waterfront for a minute. Mm -hmm. getting to kind of have all those different experiences within the span of an afternoon. Um, And, you know, get food where it's like, you know, just like so fucking good. And so fucking cheap. It's so awesome. Like Super cheap. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of my definitive New York City experiences from before I even moved here happened in Chinatown. Chinatown is a really special place in my heart, especially Buda Bodai and Bodhi, their other location. And like the owner is so sweet. He knows me and he gives me mooncakes during... Chinese New Year, and he still recognizes me, and I've been going there since 
I've been going there for years, like probably a decade from before. Oh, yeah. I love Chinatown so much. Mm-hmm, me too. Even just skating through it is so nice. Uh, I wouldn't skate through it, to be honest with you. Maybe at nighttime, going to LES Park. I'll, so usually it's at night. Yeah, because normally the, the, the streets are narrow, and also a lot of the streets over there are fucked up and hard to skate on. I will not do it during the daytime. I will not do it during the daytime or the afternoon. During the day, it's kind of trash, though. Yeah, That's early true. morning, yes. And there's there's people all over the streets and the sidewalks. But, yeah, like, totally. during the afternoon, it's yeah. mayhem. <laughs> it is mayhem. You ain't going nowhere. Maybe at like twelve o'clock at night, mm-hmm. it is beautiful outside, and if it's good weather, it's like seventy-eight degrees, not windy. My my best friend lived on Elizabeth Street, and he has a house his dad owned a shop at the bottom, and we used to host parties in his house at on. It's like a little um studio apartment and whatnot, and we used to have right in Chinatown. So like every Chinese New Year, we have like a little house party, yeah. and then. We have a ritual of doing wool hop and go down to wool hop <laughs> and order like mad dumplings. Good times, good times. And then going by the waterfront, even though it's cold as shit. You know that they built, they rebuilt that whole area mm-hmm. underneath the FDR. So it's much smoother for skaters mm-hmm. until like about, I think it's what, uh, mm-hmm. four, yeah, 10th think so. Street, like 14th Street. That's, that's when it becomes it's into nice. the park, correct? But yeah, down by now, South Street Seaport. Yeah, where the banks is open up, I believe. Remember, it was cut off. Yeah, it's real. Smooth Remember, it was too. cut off before. Now it's open. Yo, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I know I'm saying it like, oh, it's it's like I can't wait, but it, and it's literally right there. But you know, I still I wanna I wanna take a day off and go just like mm. bask in it. Like, oh yeah, this is it, it gives me nostalgia. Just, just being here, just like, well, I remember it being like this. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Lower East Side Skates on a Saturday, and then we're going to grab some dumplings, and then we're going to go pop over by the waterfront, make a day of it. Yeah? Hell yeah. Say less. <laughs> Say less. Done. 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 Yeah. Done. Done. I, I probably still have my picture in Woolhop for the Dumpling King. The Dumpling King! <laughs> <laughs> I got like a dollar bill down there that says Dumpling King on it. Because I ate like maybe about. All right. So I ate like a about New York legend, y'all. 18 a New York legend. From Wuhan. Steam dumpling. <laughs> and you're talking about having the munchies oh on New Year's Eve and you ain't eat all day and you Spongious. just had nothing about alcohol in your system. You are going to go <laughs> run through those damn dumplings. And you're going to run oh, through man. them. You got any more? <laughs> People looking at me and I'm just scoffing them down. One dip. Flaming hot. Oop. Bring it to bring in the next row. No, no, no. I'm not doing no. Fl- I'm not doing no flaming hot. Mm, no, no, no. You know what's a that's good where, spot? That's the one I I'm like. Sure I like Vanessa's a lot. Um, yeah, Vanessa's dumpling on 14th Street is also good too. Yeah. Vanessa's is really good. That one is real good. But there's some spots. There's one. All right. So Warhop is right here, around the corner from Warhop. It's like a little yeah, side street. About. You know what I'm talking about? And then it goes to the courthouses. There's another dumpling spot right there. That uh-huh. place has been there for years. Kind of like too. by the park, is what you're you saying? Food much cheaper there, and the dumplings is way better. Oh, that little park near the courthouse. Is yeah, I know there. what you're talking about. I can picture it. I know. Too. Yeah, yeah. Going towards the park. Yep. Yes, I know what you're talking about. It's on the side. Uh-huh. It's like a little yeah. ass redding. You okay. know what I'm talking about? You walk by it, you'd be like, "Go in there. <laughs> you go in okay. there. You could get you. Yep. You get you like a good like set of dumplings for like maybe about two dollars. Tip well. Yeah. Fully. Um, you get like eight of those suckers. Any more silly questions? Like yeah, eight. I have one that's less silly, and I think it's a potential good closer. You <laughs> work in a lot of different mediums. You are someone who is a photographer, a videographer, and I'm sure you dabble in other art forms as well, of course, including skating. Do you have a particular creation that you're most proud of? The most? I would say my photography. Because I would random, I would randomly go. I'm a street photographer, so I randomly go places. I'll hop over the gate that says off limits, and I'll try and find the best best picture I can find, or what I see, you know. And I want to, I want to take pictures. So a lot of the pictures that I take time to do and put out there, it's same thing with videos. So like my photography and videography, the most. I was going to say DJing, but I haven't DJed in a long time. Even though you see all the records here, there's more than meets the eye. 
So as you can see, all the records here. Whoa. Yeah, it's about 8,000. Yeah, that's so cool. So when you DJed, it was all vinyl stuff? About 8, or do you do like also like Leon electronic stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, digital, vinyl. I, I, I was vinyl DJ in the beginning. That's so sick. I started on vinyl. My ears trained in, trained in uh, vinyl, playing vinyl, um, analog sound. But I, I went to digital, which was Serato. I was a beta tester with Serato yeah. also on a 45 um, record, which was only a minute. It was about 45 seconds. It was a minute long. So you had to keep switching it at that time. That was the beginning of digital Serato era. That's so, cool. Yep. DJs. Yeah, I got a shit ton of them That's here. So, so cool. I grew up with a dad that played a lot of vinyl, so I was I got versed in how to handle records, and he would talk to me about the different kinds and stuff and all that. But so he had a pretty decent record collection. I feel glad that I grew up on it. These days, I don't I don't really have much vinyl or anything myself. But oh, it's a process. It's, it's cool to have learned about it, and I'm imagining all that I had to deal with and how it was. It is a process, you know. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't imagine DJing with vinyl, like. You gotta like haul your shit everywhere. You gotta like be on your shit with like all the manual transferings of everything. You gotta like, yeah. You got scratches on your record. You know that that's gonna pick up your needles. You gotta worry about your needles being dirty or, or cook. Mm -hmm. How dirty your vinyl is, the dust between the grooves, which ain't, has the sound. So it's a lot. Like I can pull out a record right out right now and show you and be like, oh, this one's still in shrink wrap plastic. And this yeah. should be spotless, mm -hmm. like a mirror, right? And you can see the grooves. You know, who is this? <laughs> Play it, don't stop the music. DMX, <laughs> wow. I, I had DMX here time. somewhere. I just pulled it out, too. Oh, a friend of mine. Hell Ooh. yeah, what? Hey, look, I even got Def Jam Mariah Carey. Damn. Which one is this? Like that, job, Like that, job, <laughs> Like that, that, and like that, job. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so yeah. and then each record i don't just have one i have two mm -hmm. to three to four i have triple copies of oh. each record in case one get messed up and i have yeah, to be juggled, sure about that. scratch yeah mm -hmm. yeah instead of you clicking mp3s i had to carry like three or four records of the same record mm -hmm. and had to like switch and be juggle mm -hmm. that is a very hard I art bet. It's easy for them now, but hmm. back in the days with vinyl was very hard. That. What's your favorite place that you've traveled to? I wanted to ask you that earlier too. We were talking a bit about Asia. Asia, I know you've been all over Asia. I actually love Osaka, Japan. I love Taiwan. I really do. But Osaka, this Asia, Osaka, Japan is the best. If you're going there for food, if you're going there for food, the best food. If you're going in there for clubs and dance and music, they got the best music and club and dance. The culture there is accepting. They love people there. It's it's it's, it's a whole vibe. How are the record stores there? <laughs> like it's a whole vibe in Osaka. Mm -hmm. And then Kyoto is not far from Osaka too. Dope actually. Um one of my homies at GrooveNet Records, he's out there. And um, in Osaka, damn, bro. Um, you have. I'm trying to think of the name in English. Ugh. King of Digging. You have King of Digging out there. So record shops in Japan, and they also repressing a lot of records out in Japan, also. So the record business is booming up there. So and in Japan, they they preserve a lot of their records and they take care of their stuff. So mm -hmm. whenever people go out to Japan, they try to bring as much records back. Because they resell it and they take care of their shit. Their shit is like... Mint. <clears throat> Majority of the Japanese people in those record businesses, yeah, mint, super mint. They go all the way to like Brazil. and all, There's a guy in Brazil that has like a million records. He's like the archive for it. And they go out, they come here, they, there's like a um, record meetup where a bunch of collectors, they come in, they have like, they start digging and they bring back crates of bulk of what they found here and it's being shipped over into Japan and they reselling it. So you have people like that in Japan where they actually clean it, take care of the records and put it in a proper sleeve and resleeve it for you. It's it's a process. But I, I actually like Osaka for that too also. But the food, you gotta go for the food in the clubs. <laughs> like the culture is amazing. 
you're gonna love it there. Like in Kyoto, if you like countryside, you really like countryside and you like nature and mountains, mm-hmm. Kyoto. And it's only an about an hour ride on the train on the um on what is it, MRT or uh, Kahan line. Yeah. Wow, it's been a while. Yeah, you take the train, it's you gotta learn the, the train system in Japan. It's, it's similar to New York, but if you don't read uh Japanese, yeah, it's man. hard. Kyoto sounds like the ticket for me. I'm like, ooh, nature. <laughs> I went to Japan when I was a teenager because I was able to fly to Osaka. If you're gonna go to Kyoto, fly to Osaka, fly to Kansai airport where you land on the water to airport on the water and then take the train straight to kyoto that's my recommendation (laughs) i'm just saying the train ride or the plane ride to japan is just like absolutely unreal because it's so So many hours but i went when i was a teenager because when i was a kid like one of the ways i got to travel was i just had to fundraise for it so we found ways for me to like be involved with different stuff where we could fundraise and so i was like an international girl scout or whatever, which literally just meant that we were like trying to do like, you know, plan trips, but we could use like our cookie sales for like fundraising to travel. So if I would sell cookies, I could decide like, do I want to give that money to my troop or do I want to get like, use it towards my travel? And then we would do like, we would work the Cleveland air show. So I would sell hot dogs at the air show and stuff and work long shifts there to like raise money. We would sell like, you know, poinsettias at the holidays, like whatever we had to do. So I raised a bunch of money so I could go to Japan because I really wanted to go because I was super into like manga and like anime and stuff when I was younger. My troop didn't send us anywhere. Um, we didn't get any of the cookie, reap any of the cookie same. benefits. You have to. All the money you sell for cookies goes to your troop as a Girl Scout. No, but they didn't uh, use it for anything fun like that. It was uh, well, the, like, but this was an international troop. So this was oh, separate. So I had, oh. my, I had my local <laughs> troop and I could choose to put my money towards my local troop. But a lot of times I we see. had the money we needed for the camp outs and stuff we wanted to do. But this was an, specifically an international troop where like you join with the intention of like, culture sharing basically where like you're you're traveling abroad and that's like the point of the troop so that but that was like basically like my like that was like my way of like i don't want to say gaming the system necessarily (laughs) but like that was my way of being like we're going to use this nonprofit to basically raise money so i can just like travel because it's like it's not like we were doing anything for our local communities or anything we just were like we're gonna we want to travel and this is how we use money look there's other people that do worse than yeah but you're definitely gaming the system you know why (laughs) Hey, you get you because take an opportunity. what we were doing at my Girl Scout troop is we were literally sleeping in church basements and calling it a slumber party. <laughs> well, I mean, what we did at my local troop was my mom was our leader and she gave up on making us do anything because we would always be really obstinate about it. So she'd be like, use your cookie money for whatever we want. We'd be like, we just want to buy snacks and rent a movie and have a sleepover at our friend's house and use our cookie money for that uh, and like gossip. So that's like what we did. Your mom was the secret. My mom was just like, I don't care. I'm not going to force y'all to do shit you don't want to do anymore. I'm sick of fighting with y'all. Do whatever the she fuck you the want. Homie. I'll She's just like, sign off on it. Bad. She's the homie. She didn't do that. Oh. She was like, if you want badges, you actually have to. She was like, very, she was a stickler about a lot of shit. She just actually. Oh. I literally remember the meeting where she was trying to get us to do bad stuff and we were all just talking to each other and talking over her. And I she I remember because she stood up, she slammed her hands on the table and she was like, if you guys don't want to do this stuff, I'm not going to make you do this stuff. You never have to do this stuff again. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you use your cookie money for. And so because she went off like that, we all held her to that standard. And we were like, you said you don't care what we use our cookie money for. So we want to use it and we want to go to Girl Scout camp, but we just want to buy snacks and talk about the way. I'm like, you don't to tell us what we're going to do anymore. But we, a lot of us were still motivated to get like, badges and stuff my motherfucking basically but anyway so so basically i was just able to fundraise and i went to japan and we did a thing where we were there for like a week or something but we went to osaka kyoto we went to like nara we went to tokyo we did like you know we got to see like a whale cruise thing like off the water at one of those spots and it was really cool and actually osaka and kyoto were like two of my favorite places that we went they were like really really beautiful and unique and like just really fucking cool i would love to go back as an adult so it's it's like it's cool to hear you talking about it because I'm like, oh, yeah, shit, that's right. I got to try to make my way over there. I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go to Tokyo, but what I was hearing is in order for me to go back, like to transfer between Tokyo and Osaka, I need to buy this pass for the, the um, high yeah. speed rail. The yeah, we took the bullet train. It was cool. So, it was cool. yeah, so there's a pass that you buy and you go ride it and you go ride it like all week. You pay this one one time. It's like a pass for the whole week and whatnot. Instead of paying a one time payment, which is pretty yeah. expensive, and you can travel back and forth between Tokyo and uh and Osaka. Yeah, that's what we did. And it's like what two hour, that's three what we hour did. train it was really ride. Cool. It's like so high speed, but you're in the middle of these like rice paddies and stuff, so you almost don't know that you're going as fast as you're going because the fields are so stretched out. But you're going like so. It's real wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the it's rice really field. It was really cool. 
talk about the rice yeah. fields with the green the yeah, green sticking yeah, up that's cool yeah they got a lot of they got a lot of um agriculture mm-hmm. field out there um another memorial spot i'm sorry if you like snow if you like the winter sports and you like doing stuff in the winter i suggest going all the way up to sendai or Sapporo, mm. in japan you have the best winter winter time ever up there it's cold as shit hmm. but the snow up there is beautiful mm. it's colder there than new york i'm letting y'all know that now for anybody from the states if you've ever been in, in new york when it's freezing cold and japan is 10 times colder and in, in Sapporo that and makes sendai. sense the elevation yeah i had a north phase on and i was still <laughs> cold <laughs> North Face won't save you. <laughs> nah, I had a full, I had the full snowboarder outfit, and I was still cold too, because of sweat. Everything I hit you, that wind. Gotta go. Gotta plan your trip. Mm-hmm. Well, I should have to figure out before that. But... I should go in October. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to leave our listeners with? Anything that you want to reflect on to wrap things up? Me, um, go out and skate. Enjoy yourself. Don't limit yourself and just go out and skate and be mm. happy. You hear that? Get your skates on and get out there. And love the community mm. that you're in. Oh, yeah. You got to work. Got to put that work in. Mm. Pay your skate, yeah, your tax, your wood tax dues and whatnot. <laughs> Pay it all. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> mm. And I just want to say I really appreciate y'all for having me on this and speaking mm. with y'all. You know, I really enjoy this mm-hmm. time. I'm having a fucking blast, excuse me. <laughs> but I really appreciate both of you individuals and individually, you know. You know, we had our one on ones and I really just wanna say I thank y'all for having this platform mm-hmm. for people, us uh, skaters in general. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for having me yeah, on. Yeah. It. It's been such a pleasure. Um I'll be back. Yeah, hell yeah. I'll be back. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure. And I'm, I, I'll say personally too, I'm just like really glad and grateful that you're out in the world doing your thing, being who you are. You know, I think it's special and I think it affects people. Yeah, like you make a difference. And I know that's true because you've made a difference in my life, even in the few times you've interacted. So I just really appreciate that. And I'm glad you made the time for us and to be on this podcast with us and to speak, you know, to your heart and your truth and stuff. And, we're going to make a little Chinatown day day happen oh, yeah. soon. So <laughs> you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> no, yeah, we're going to make, we're going to make a bunch of videos and then, you know what, who knows, you might even have a little, little, little recording session, podcast session and having with their socializing of different skaters within the area. We'd like to, who I think knows? we'd like to try to do something like that. So you'd put it out there. It's, you're, it's heard. It's heard. Yeah. Have your little mini microphone. I do have a small uh, lavalier <laughs> microphone. We could do that. Welcome. We have the for it. We've been thinking about it. We want to try to get out to like some skate events and like kind of. Why not? Because we're nervous people. Because we're very nervous socializers. <laughs> <Just> do it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to babysit us. <laughs> just, just do it. Just yeah, go absolutely. and do it. Like we don't have your energy all the time. I'll be there right with y'all. I'll be like, yo, y'all want to have a conversation? Y'all want to talk about skating? Yeah, right, Let's go. Cool. Come on. Come over here for a second. Come over here for a second. We are fine. Perfect. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that's when you get them. Boom. Hit them with the microphone. <laughs> so, how's it going today? <laughs> All right. Okay. Heard. And you know what? People were actually do it. I know. I would do it. If somebody came up to me and did that, I would be in stitches. I'll be in stitches. I'll be like, let's do it. I feel like <clears throat> for the most part, you know, yeah, like people I'm like to it. be able to speak to something. You know, I think people like that attention sometimes and are usually pretty open to it. I think we, at least I can speak for myself. I just get nervous about stuff. We all want to be do. heard and acknowledged, right? So part of that is you coming out into the skin community and you coming out with that little microphone. You, you want to listen to the people that want to be heard. So, mm. boom. That's helpful. And you're putting it out there and then other people are listening and can relate and then communicate. Mm-hmm. And that's when everything starts to connect. People start to connect. You get it. You see the vision. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm like, let's go. We mm-hmm. out here. I love it. We out here. We're going to have like a little mini talk session after dumpling and skating and what now dumpling right about now interviewing local skaters in the air all right so thank you so much for talking to us frank <laughs> you're the best talk to you later bye bye
always. Bye.